I want to talk about gradient colors and building a gradient to use two or more colors on the on the face of a of a fill or a shape. I've got three black fills here, the uh, circle, square, and star. And I'm going to take the gradient file tab out of the color so I can see both the gradient and uh, the color or swatches that I want to use. Be sure that in your gradient you have the show options showing so you see all this information down here below. It opens up as a linear color, black to white. There's white here and black on the left. You should always remember when you're putting a gradient together. It's a very good idea. Most of the time you'll do it this way. Left is where the light goes. Light on the left. So white, light on the left, and black on the white. Now there's two colors here. If I click on the bar, you'll see these two little buckets of paint and this center diamond. The diamond shows up in the center of buckets and it locates itself equidistantly. If you move it, you'll go white and very quickly into black. Or if you go the other way, you'll go white for a long time and then very quickly into black. When it sets up in the center between two buckets, these two buckets in particular to start with, then it has an uh, uh, effect that it will go from black to white. And in this linear form, here it is, and it's, uh, it's now on the fill. That means if I take this uh, square and select my, my black and white, and here is the gradient tool, this uh, black to white little rectangle here. If I go there and say, I'm going to take it, click on the top and drag it to the bottom. Now remember, light is on the left, so light's the first color that happens, and it's light on the left and, and going to more dark on the bottom. And I am in my linear versus radial mode. This little thermometer here is you can kind of fiddle and diddle with that to get it to uh, do a little more advanced stuff. If you want it in the middle, be in the middle. You can slide it up and down. When you then click away on this, you see that it's white at the top and, and uh, going to black on the bottom. There's another version of this that is uh, ra radial. And that means, again, light on the left, so the light color is in the center of this radiating color and darks on the outside. If I select a circle and go to my uh, black and white to black radial, it shows up with the white spot or hot spot in the middle. If I take my gradient tool and say the light's coming from the upper lift and click here and put the hot spot up in that corner of this ball and drag it to the um, shadow area here, you get that effect. And when I click away from it, the little uh, thermometer goes away. So now I can see that the light is hitting where the white or hot spot would be on a shiny uh, ball, a gray ball, and then it's, as it comes around the ball and it gets into the shadow area, then light is not bending around the ball and its shadow in that area. So that's the, the radial versus the gradient. Now, to make something other, more interesting other than black and white, we come here and uh, I'm going to click on this white bucket. Click, click. And it opens up my um, choices for colors. And right now it's, it's looking at just black and white because uh, that's the colors that were there when, um, when we started out. So I need to get a color in there. Let's do it a little more dramatically. Swatches. I'm going to take this... Um, kind of a light orange here and I'm just going to drag it and put it in that paint bucket and it changed it to that color. Now I can make more buckets by holding down the option key and clicking on this orange bucket and moving it out and now I have two buckets of orange. But I want this first bucket to be a lighter color so click on it, click click and it opens up the sliders and I'm going to take some of the yellow down and some of the red down so it's not pink and I'm getting back into more of a beige. The more I take out, the more white I get. But a little touch of red and a little touch of yellow, and I've got a beige. And so when I look at that and click on that bucket, I've got the beige bucket and an orange bucket. Okay, let's get this bucket here, option key, and make another copy. And this time I'm going to have it a stronger orange, maybe this orange right here. I'm going to just drag that and put it in. You can drag a swatch, or you can select the bucket, and it'll open up your opacity thing and you can uh, or open up your uh, slider bar things and you can go with that. Click on the away from it and it goes away. Okay, the last color I want, not this black, but a very dark red. 
And I can take this red here and dump it in, but it's not dark enough. So click, click, add some blue to make it darker. It's kind of getting into browns. So a little more red and um, all of the yellow. Let's see, get a little black going there too. Okay, so when I click on the palette here, the secondary palette goes away, and now I have light to medium, and I can arrange these. See how the little, tri little diamond shapes arrange themselves half by half, so that it's the equidistant traveling of colors, and I can arrange those, and now I have set my radio. I want to save that radio in the swatches, so there's the radio, and I click here, bingo, and I don't need to give it a name. I'm just going to say OK, and it shows up right here as my first choice of this uh, beige, orange, or in darker orange, brown combination. I also save it whether I'm going to use it or not as a linear. And there it is, the linear going light to the left. And uh, save that as well. And without giving it a name, just put it there and then you can see what I'm using. Now when I go to that um, black and white, I can select the gradient that's, the, let's go with the linear. And then I can uh, take my tool here and say, rather from top to bottom, left to right, or diagonally, upper left to lower right. So I can play the game. Now, if I start in the middle and end in the, you know, I don't go all over the edges, then it's, it's, it's light for a long time, then it really rapidly changes. If I start beyond and go beyond, then some of those colors are lost out here. I don't see them. I'm just seeing the middle spread. This is something you have to work with every time you work with the color as to what uh, is going to be your your layout for the linear here and, and right, left, top, bottom, diagonally, whatever. Now if I go to the circle and say, okay, give me that that uh, radiant color and it, it picked itself up. I'll do it again here though, but uh, here's the hot spot right there. And I'll, you know, let's make it a little different. Let's, yeah. let's go to that radio. And uh, let's click uh, light coming from the other side. Now, when I click away from it, I can you can see that I've accomplished that uh, radial thing. I can even go to a non-circular uh, pattern and use that uh, gradient and put the uh, hot spot uh, a little higher, maybe over in the corner, and drag it down. I get that, or I can pull it from high to low this way, and I get uh, the su more subtle change of colors. So that, that, that depends on how much you, you want to do what in your, in your illustration. But when you get to that point, then now you're using gradients. Now, if I save those, that's fine. Now maybe I want to make another uh, b choice of colors. Let's go through a blue range. And I can take this color blue and put it in this bucket right here. And um, copy the bucket out, option key, and move it out, and then say click, click. Let's go, let's go back to this one first. Click, click, and make it, uh, come on, click, click. And, and make it a lot lighter blue, almost a white blue. And then the, um, let's see what happened with the bucket. I might have switched over. Let's roll them on back here. Okay, so now I've gone from a light blue to a medium blue. This one uh, can be a little darker blue. Now I'm going to go with all, all my blues here take out the uh, yellow so I don't get green, and um, put in a little more red, and it's getting darker, maybe a touch of black. And um, now, whoops, it jumped over. Let's get it there. Now, this one, um, let's make that uh, really dark blue, which is all of the blue and all of the red and none of the yellow and a little bit of black happening. And then this last bucket, uh, let's go with that... Uh, really blue, dark blue, all the blue, all the red, and uh, some, a lot of the black. Okay, so if I spread these out a little bit more, then I get uh, a change of thing going on. I'm going to save that as a radial. Okay, and then I'm going to save it, change it to a linear, and save it again. Now, if that works, let's try it on this uh, square. I'll come down here and get the linear version of it. And remember, it starts light where I start. So let's go light at the top, down to dark at the bottom. Or the other way, light at the bottom, going to dark at the top. So 
if you're building the sky or if you're building water underground un underwater or something you you can get that to work for you if you wanted it uh, to be a, on the round surface and you're going to take uh, the hot spot to the upper left and drag it to the lower right you get that going on and so your colors can be multiple you are generally going from light medium darker way darker darkest it's not a good idea to go light medium light dark light dark light dark light dark unless you're going to make a Navajo blanket or something that's not a good idea because it's very hard to control but that's the uh, use of uh, two or more colors and this gives you an airbrush effect in Illustrator. You, you get the, kind of the same effect going on in Photoshop when we get there. But <clears throat> this allows you to use multiple colors and uh, let them be then in a CMYK format so that if this is going to go to a printer, your Illustrator document is going to be printed. It can, in fact, find the colors it needs and put the dots together to make this work. So. Practice on your own with shapes and colors and things, and then when you get through, you're obviously going to, you know, move them around each other and, and put them in combinations, perhaps. But uh, move those to your desire as you design, and and save them. Now, if you for some reason say, "Oh, I don't like that," I'm going to change it and come back down here and change it. Then throw away the old one, just grab it and throw, put it in this little trash can, uh, or you can have a second one if you want to. I'd start naming them by then and call it, you know, orange one or orange two. But if you make a new color, go ahead and throw away both the gradient, and the radial and the linear of it if you like the new color better and tend to use that more often. When you're through, put your gradient back in your packet so it's uh, out of the way. And then uh, save your document, file, save as, and we'll just call this gradient practice. I'm going to save it to the desktop as an Adobe Illustrator. And I'll later I'll take this desktop off the desktop and put it in a file where I want to store it. For, but I'll put it in the desktop so I know where it is when I need to find it to store it. And it's saved. And um, we've done gradients.